are you someone who's tried multiple diet plans but still struggles to control your eating? In this episode of the Kirk Miller Podcast, I want to explain three main reasons why diet plans fail long term, especially if you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, someone who travels, socializes a lot, and you've got family and friendship circles to think about. Of course, it goes without saying, having been a transformation specialist now for so many years, there are certain people and certain times of the year uh, where following a diet plan you know, can help optimize progress, install discipline, give you structure, um, but it doesn't help when you know you physically can't control your eating, you can't control your cooking, wherever you prefer to sort of implement your diet plan. Okay, um, so I'm going to go through three reasons why diet plans don't work, and I'm going to give you some thoughts and tips to think about in relation to each one. All right, number one. For me, diet plans amplify an all or nothing mentality, which for me is the number one reason why people lack consistency with their health and fitness and in particular their food. The problem with the diet plan is people stick to it. They might stick to it for a week, two weeks, four weeks. Uh, For most people on the planet, maybe January, February, if they're lucky, And then the moment you go back to any form of normality, you want to socialize, you've got to eat at a restaurant, you go on a holiday, might be Christmas, uh, you've got a business meeting where you've got to choose off a menu, um, you're at a family party, whatever it may be, diet plans don't teach you how to manage your food and choose correctly. And then when people are not on their diet plan, when they have to eat a little bit differently, maybe they pick a treat or two, they eat a bit more than they had maybe previously been doing on the diet plan. And then from my experience, especially in like high performers, obsessive type individuals, <laughs> which I've sort of been one and sort of am one myself, you just think, fuck it. And once the wheels are off, you say, fuck it. And before you know it, um, you've gorged on thousands of calories, probably drank a lot of calories too, if that's your thing. And then before you know it, it spirals into that mentality of, of failed, fuck it, I've undone all my good work, so what's the point? And then you think you can't achieve uh, your goals, okay? It's absolute bullshit. You know, having coached some of the most disciplined disciplined people on the planet, um, I'm yet to coach someone who wants to eat out the Tupperware 52 weeks of the year or someone who can literally stay at home every day, every week of the year, stick into a meal plan. Of course, many people do like to have that structure and maybe follow a set meal plan during the week. But over the course of 52 weeks and 52 weekends, um, you you need to know how to adapt. Okay. Um, So a better way to look at, you know, the all or nothing mentality and not beat yourself up if you can't stick to that meal plan seven days a week year round is to have structure, but be malleable with that. Okay. And instead of thinking you need to be perfect, Think consistent progress and consistent discipline rather than inconsistent perfection. Okay, focus on your habits across seven days, even if you can't stick to a meal plan for seven days. Okay, and if you fuck up, kill the monster early. You know, over a period of a year, as I say to all my clients, you're going to slip up, you're going to maybe be at a restaurant and you know, treat yourself a little bit more, you're going to drink a little bit more than maybe what you pre-planned, that's totally cool. But don't let that turn into two, three, four days where you're off it. And before you know it, you've undone weeks and months of good work. So if you are someone who is quite an obsessive individual, um, you've generally told yourself you're an all or nothing type person, it doesn't really work when it comes to your health and fitness and especially with food, trust me. Um, It might work with going all in in business it certainly doesn't work with food so um, think consistent progress rather than inconsistent perfection and be be malleable with your structure and your routine okay and if you fuck up kill the monster early you know you know from my experience having coached so many people the, the, the guys who have that I say balance but basically more discipline and consistency year round are the guys that may indulge from time to time, but that doesn't turn into two, three, four days of being off it. Um, 
that they give themselves a mountain to climb and they're on that yo-yo with their weight, shape and emotions and energy over the course of the year. So, you know, pick, pick your times where, you know, you want to, you want to relax, but, but eradicate that all or nothing mentality. And for me, diet plans, uh, promote that. If you're, if you're on a diet plan and, and, and you really cannot wait to get off it, then you're just lining yourself up to fail. It's, it's the wrong meal plan structure for you. Number two, diet plans, they don't help when traveling, when you're having business lunches, socializing or eating with family. A diet plan teaches you nothing about how to guesstimate calories, how to make smarter choices off a menu, um, how to be clever with cho choosing certain types of protein. If you're trying to allow more buffer for calories, for example, with alcohol, you want to eat more carbs. So, you, you, you know, we need to have an awareness of how to handle these social occasions, how to eat when we're traveling, how to, you know, maybe be a bit cleverer when we're at buffets on holidays and also um, look after, you know, really special uh, moments throughout the year, which is, of course, Christmas and summer holidays, etc. All right. So some tips in relation to that, in relation to socializing, traveling, um, you know, times with family, friends. Um you need to forward plan your week every week because uh, from my experience, aside from maybe January when a lot, half the world wants to do dry jam, they're generally not that bothered about going out socializing most of the other months of the year. And especially from summer onwards to the end of the year, you should be forward planning your weekends all the time. So you're not, you know, in a reactive state at the weekend, uh, you're not just completely down in tools at the weekend because most people are very good at sticking to a meal plan, diet plan Monday to Thursday, but then going to complete shit Friday to Sunday. And how you manage Friday to Sunday is going to play a large part and a large role of whether or not you actually drop body fat. Okay. And a diet plan doesn't teach you how to do that. So we need to forward plan. How can we box clever? If we know we're going to have a bit bigger meal at the weekend, um, we've got maybe a wedding or simply you just want to indulge a little bit. How can we manipulate calories um, to allow for that? Okay, and a rigid meal plan will not teach you that. So think about in relation to socializing, traveling, eating out with friends, family. Where do you need to invest more? Where do you need to save more? Basically, look at your food across seven days as, 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 as sort of currency. You know, um, Think about where you'd like to eat more calories across your Monday to Sunday period. For most people, from my experience, again, they want to eat more Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday. If, that, if that's the case, something's got to give during the rest of the week without drastically trimming your calories that much during the week that you then overeat and over binge um, at the weekend. So forward plan and just manipulate you know, your calories, think, think clever. Where do I need to invest? Where do I want to invest more calories and basically eat more? Where do I want to save more calories and, and eat a little bit less without compromising your protein across seven days? All right. But a diet plan does not teach you that. Okay. Just some really simple tips that I'll always sort of talk about in relation to food as always trying to eat as much real food as possible, especially when, you know, you're trying to, uh, save calories. You know, if you'll find someone if, you, if you've been someone that has always, always struggled with diet plans, just focus first and foremost on high quality food, real food, and you'll naturally, you know, manage calories better just by eating more high quality food. Number three, diet plans do not teach you how to control your emotions or thoughts. If, you, if you're watching this or listening to this, you, you probably have a rough idea of what to eat in terms of real food. No, you should eat maybe a bit more protein, a uh, few more veggies, a bit more fiber, smartly picked carbs at fats, right? But why don't you do it if you're not where you want to be with your fat loss in your body? And a lot of the time, it's um, failing to control our emotions and our thoughts. Basically, our state generally influence what we're going to eat. When stress is high, intelligence is low, and for a lot of people, for food is that short-term reward. And diet plans don't teach you how to control your emotions. So some tips on this and different ways to look at that, that a diet plan will not teach you. You need to anticipate over your week when you 
when you are typically most stressed and vulnerable to overeating food or potentially drinking more alcohol than, than what you'd maybe like to. Because, you know, the, these are the things that are going to slow you down in relation to how you want to look and obviously protecting your health. But you need to forward think in your week, when am I most stressed? Is it after work every day or is it like half the world at the end of a long week at work on a Friday where you can't wait to just get a takeaway down you excessively drink because you're stressed, uh, you know, and you're, you're, you're overwhelmed from a, a, a heavy duty week at work. Okay, so anticipate that. And then on those times and days and maybe even places, environments, for example, where you feel most vulnerable, where you typically tend to overeat at the same times and days, how can you make smart decisions ahead of that emotion kicking in? When you are stressed or when you're in a certain place where usually you overeat, how can you replace the overconsumption of calories or booze with a better option that's slightly less calories? You know, how can you maybe, if you decide to go to a certain restaurant uh, or, or go to the, the pub, whatever your thing is, um, how can you create a different activity which is still giving you pleasure and allowing you to let off some steam without gorging on calories or maybe drinking too many calories? All right, because the more you control your state, the more you control your fat loss. Okay, so an awareness of when we feel emotionally vulnerable or tested is paramount. And diet plans do not teach you this. So just in summary, diet plans, they amplify an all or nothing mentality. They don't teach you nothing about how to handle social occasions, travel, family occasions, basically special occasions throughout the year. And three, they don't help you control your emotions or thoughts. And having transformed so many people, the more you can con control these things that I've spoke about, these three things, then the better you look and the better you'll eat. And I want to leave you with three food questions. Three food questions that will help you. If you were to ask yourself these questions, I can guarantee that you'll start eating better immediately. Number one, what did I find easy to stick to with previous diet plans and why? So of all the diet plans maybe you've tried or the different ways to sort of handle your food, what do you find really, really easy and why? Is it eating at a certain time of the day, you never had friction? Um, is it a certain type of food that you never got bored of? Um, was it a different way to manage your food? Did you find it easier to stick to a diet plan when you outsource it? Did you find it easier to stick to a diet plan when maybe you prepped a couple of meals a day yourself? But just... Ask that question because if you found it easy to do, then maybe you need to revisit that, that habit that was easy to do, okay? Number two, what have I always struggled to stick to with diet plans and why? Because if you've consistently struggled with something on any of these diet plans, okay, look, and the obvious one, of course, is simply being in a calorie deficit, which anyone who says is that's, that's completely easy is, is full of shit, you know? Um, your body is not designed to be in a calorie deficit long term, okay? But if the goal is fat loss and you carry more fat than what you want, you need to be in a calorie deficit. But you're always going to struggle um, if you don't identify the things that you consistently struggle with. Um, so was it on previous diet plans, maybe, uh, you know, eating too many meals caused you know, stress to you? Um, was it that... On, on any previous diet plans, there was no guidance over the weekend, but just address what, why did you fail with that diet? Because that's a sure sign that that's not the way to do things moving forward. And then thirdly, what is the, what is the one thing, ask yourself this, what is the one thing I need to stop doing and start doing right now that will improve the way I manage my food? Really simple framework. If you looked at your food the last week, the last two weeks, the last month, what do you need to stop doing and what do you need to start doing more of? Really simple framework. Ask yourself a better question with food and you'll start looking into a, a better answer, okay? And lastly, a quote, and this, this really helps myself, clients, change the way you look at food. Because often, if we've failed lots of different diet plans and we've really struggled for years with really trying to 
look the way we want to due to food, it's because we have a negative description of food and the way we look at it. We associate so much pain verbally, mentally, uh, that we've got constant friction. So even if we had a, a food management system or diet plan that we thought may work, if you're negatively looking at food, it's never going to work. So we need to change the way we look at food. And this quote um, really, really helps me and clients do that. Everything I eat is an investment in the energy I wish to live with. So rather than just looking at food as calories and, and, and veggies, whatever first comes to mind, if I was to say to you, right, describe what food means to you, try and look at it as everything I eat is an investment in the energy I wish to live with because then you'll associate more value with the food rather than being some item that you've got to put in your mouth and chew, all right? When you really get clear and understand that everything you put in your mouth is having a direct impact on your mental energy, your physical energy, the way you're showing up to your family, your friends, your colleagues, um, your, 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 your basically your mental stamina across seven days, you're more likely to eat healthier foods, irrelevant of which management system you choose to operate. So yeah, abide by that quote and, and I, I, I guarantee you'll eat better. And as always, if you've took value from this uh, podcast, please subscribe. Um, feel free to always uh, reach out to me if you have any comments, questions. Uh, I've simply uh, created this podcast to add as much value as possible, share as much experience as possible. And if your goal is to get in the best shape of your life, how you manage your food is going to be absolutely uh, pivotal to optimizing your health, uh, body and confidence long term. And today's episode should give you a much deeper perspective on whether or not a diet plan alone is truly right for you long term. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.